How you doing everyone? It's Mike from Sneaky Evil Spawn and I'm starting with the first tutorial for a Dwarf Fortress and uh, to start off you're gonna wanna download it of course and instead of just downloading Dwarf Fortress you should get this thing called the Lazy Noob Pack. It, uh, it comes with a lot of stuff that helps you especially if you're new and plenty of people still use it, veterans of the game. It just helps a lot so we're gonna start off by by googling it. Lazy new pack should be the first link and then uh, right down here you just download it and you'll get a folder just like uh, put that around your desktop and uh, I have a link I have a shortcut to it right here all you have to do is open the folder and just with your right mouse button just drag it onto your desktop and it creates a shortcut so you can just double click it whenever you can't just drag it because it has to be in the same folder so uh, once you have it downloaded, just double click to start it up. And uh, here we have the GUI for the Lazy New Pack. Some options that I like to have is here you have no aquifers. Aquifers in the game are just a real pain. You're better off not having it. So just f turn them off. You're really better off without them. Uh, then here you have graphics because uh, the default graphics are just horrendous to look at. If you really want to play this game good, you're going to want a cut in graphics installed. Uh, I like to use Iron Hand. I think it looks good. Like uh, You can use whichever one you want, but I'm going to be using Iron Hand in the videos, so if you just want to be able to look along easily, just sure, then just hit install graphics. Okay. And, uh, yep. Save games updated. Alright. So that should be all we need for now. Uh, these are default. I don't know what the default ones are, but if you want to change anything to this, because this is what I use, and I, these options are pretty good to start off. So just hit play once you're ready. And here's Door Fortress. Here's the main menu. So what you're going to want to do at first is to create a new world be able to play. So hit escape to continue. Here are the world settings. Uh, they're pretty good by default. World size, it's obviously how big your world's going to be. Let's keep that to medium. History, in the game it simulates like civilizations and how they interact. Like how far into history. If you do too short there's too many civilizations, too long and there's barely any civilizations left. So medium is good. Number of civilization, civilization self-explanatory, just keep that medium. Maximum number of sites, again, just keep it medium. Number of beasts. Uh, beasts in the game are these huge monsters that can attack your fort. Just for the sake of the video, like your first playthrough being easy, if you want to follow along, we'll just keep it low. Savagery is just like uh, things like goblins and like monsters and like small monsters attacking, we'll keep that low. Mineral occurrence, how many like metals and other like rare things are gonna generate. Let's just put that to frequent. So uh, once you have your settings done, just hit Y to start. Alright, so our world's generated and now it's simulating the history. Right now it's year 90 or 100. And civilizations are getting created, fighting each other. Just simulating. So, right here we have, if you can see my mouse, is the world generation. It's kind of like Minecraft if you played it, which I probably have because this is a Minecraft channel. <laughs> Except it's an overview, you have to imagine. So, obviously, the blue stuff's water. The green stuff's land. These gray stuff are mountains. Blues rivers. So like here would be a coastline. This is a mainland. These yellow spots are part of civilizations and these like crowns. Yeah, nothing's too visually exact. Like things like crowns and chests are used to represent cities on the overview. But once you get into more detail, things look 
better, but you gotta use a lot of your imagination in this game. Because everything is randomly generated. Uh, while we're waiting, there's these things called Mega Beasts. Uh, they can just attack you out of nowhere. But not until you're like later into your fort. So don't worry about them right away. And it's just completely ridiculous, some of the things that are made. Like in my last fort, I had a super humanoid, a 50 foot tall man made of glass, just walking around in these caves. And so he just he's just walking around and just breaks right away, because he's made of glass. And you can just get other sorts of just ridiculous creatures made. If you're curious, just Google Dwarf Fortress Mega Beasts stories. People post them all the time. And they're just interesting to read. So it's got to calculate everything. So this does take a while, the generation. Because we picked medium, I think we're going to stop at year 250, if I'm right. And uh, later on, it just starts to get slower and slower to generate. But just one more year, and it's done. So I should have explained this, but here we have historical figures, basically like legendary people that did anything significant, the amount of dead people, and any events that happened. So you can, once it's done, you can use your arrow keys to sort of look around. This world looks good. So uh, it just generates a random name. Our world is called the Auricular Planet. Whatever, you can't really change it. Enter to accept. Now it's saving. takes a little while. And now we're ready to start playing. So now you're back at the menu, just hit enter for start playing. This is my first world. This is the world that I just made, but you're gonna have one world, so just pick the one you just made, hit enter. There's three modes. There's Dwarf Fortress, which is the main mode. Adventure, which is where you're just a single unit and you go around exploring the world. I don't really play it. You can look up if you want, but I would start off with Dwarf Fortress. And Legends is just pretty much, you can look through it and it explains all the history of your world. Like, you can look into detail the lives of every single historical figure, every single event. Like, this game is huge. So just hit enter. And a lot of times in the game, if you just noticed, it, it'll look like it just froze, but that's just it calculating. So if it ever seems like it's going to crash, just give it a few seconds and it should work out. So here we have your embark screen which you want to look for. So on the right box right here is the entire world map. This is the entire world representation. And then as you can see here your blinking cursor which you can move around it's over one square at a time. That brings you to this air, this one, the region. And this entire region is just the one little square right there. And then you have another cursor on there each mouse click, I mean each arrow key moves it around to another square and with that square you can look around on the local screen which is exactly where your door, where your fortress is going to be so I don't know why there are aquifers as you can see over here yeah over here is where it says what's going to be inside of that specific uh, area in the local so there's clay, there's soil there's an aquifer which I'm not happy and shallow metals and deep metals which is good of course so there's one thing that's not here that we do want and that's flux stone which is uh, helpful for steel production and because we want that I'm gonna pause the video and look for a good site and I'll tell you about what you might want to find hey everyone I'm back and I uh, found a pretty good spot we got a temper temperature which is just mild in between We'll have hot summers, cold winters. Uh, we do have sparse trees though, but that shouldn't be too hard to get around. Basically, you can either have a lot of trees or barely any trees. Sparse, it's enough to get by. Moderate vegetation, so just like trees, we're going to have a few plants to pick up. The surroundings are calm, so nothing too crazy should be killing us. We have a river. So there's clay, 
some soil, shallow metals and deep metals, pretty much everywhere had an aquifer, so you're really better off turning those aquifers off. So on the local map, if you want to change exactly where you are, you can use U, M, K, and H to move around like that, and your little box selected is going to be the entire map you're going to get to play in. So I like to have a river where I am because it's an unlimited source of water. It helps your fisher dwarfs and there's a whole bunch of reasons why you might want rivers so it's nice to have one in your inbark area usually around the edge so if you can see I put the river right on the edge right there so once you're ready to embark you just hit E and here you can pick which uh, embark to go with there's a lot of pre-made ones you can prepare for the journey carefully to make your own custom uh, the lazy new pack comes with these four. These two are my own, so you won't have them, but you will have these four. So, this one person, he made a very good video tutorial. Actually, in fact, I'm going to link his tutorials because without him, I wouldn't even know how to play. And uh, it comes with a lazy new pack. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how he got it in, but it comes with the pack, so it's good to use. The Dwarf Fortress Video Tuts 2011. It comes with. Uh, two miners, a mason, a woodcutter, a carpenter, a brewer, and a hunter. So I like to use these guys. Uh, just for the sake of the video, we'll use them. And uh, so I think there's a glitch where every time you embark, cave lobsters are just removed. So we'll have to re add those. So what you're looking at right now is each of your dwarfs. On the left is e the specific dwarf, and on the right is the skills you can give them. So this dwarf is a high miner, so each dwarf has a default 5 in each skill, but you can add more, depend, like you know, up to 10, and the higher it is, obviously the better. He's also an appraiser, he's going to be our leader and conversationalist, so he, we're going to trade with him, which is a very important part of Blue Fortress. So mining is very important because you're all underground a lot because these are dwarves, after all. We just have a second miner just for that. He's dedicated just to mining. As you can see right here, there's uh, these blue numbers. This determines how many skills are available. They can have up to a total of 10 points given the skills to them. And uh, so that's you can max out up to two, but it's it's a good idea to spread them out. You can have a few dedicated ones, but spread them a little. Spread them out a little, but. Since you're just new, just use this. Don't worry about changing too many things right now. I'll get more into what each one does. Like this is amazing, and he's also a stone crafter. Stone crafting is pretty important. Uh, he's a carpenter, this guy, and uh, just does crafting and gem cutting. Here we have a grower, brewer, cook, and herbalist. So he's gonna be our farmer and the cook and brewing. Yeah, dwarves need alcohol like we need water. They depend on it. So you're going to need that. Here we have a proficient axeman. Oh, this must be our woodcutter. Yeah, wood is a necessity. So he'll be cutting down wood, and uh, our carpenter will be working with it. He is also an axe dwarf, so if we get into any trouble, we can enlist him in the military in an emergency. And I th think that's all he does. Yeah, dodging is also a military skill. And this guy is our hunter. He's going to be using a crossbow to find food for us. So if we hit tab, we can find out what items we're going to bring with us. So obviously you want to bring two picks for your door, for your miners, a battle axe. And so even though it's a, a battle axe, you still need to use it to cut down wood for your X-Dwarf. An anvil is important because in order to make an anvil, you need an anvil to forge one. So uh, you can either wait for a merchant, buy one from a merchant, but he doesn't always bring one. So it's usually a good idea for your metal industry to bring an anvil. I mean, once you start playing, if you don't want to bring it, it's fine. But for now, since it's default, we'll bring it. The copper crossbow and a quiver for our, and some bolts for our hunter. And then we have plenty of booze. Plump helmets. These are your main crop for dwarves. They eat a lot of them. So that's good. Pigtail seeds, cave wheat seeds, sweet pods, rock nuts, all just different seeds. 
for your farms. So we'll bring them some rat hearts, some delicious, just some basic food, some thread and cloth, bags and rope and bucket, just like basics that we might use around. So because, if you notice from the beginning, we didn't have the lobsters, so we're going to have to add them. So what we do is we hit N for new, and now all we have to do is start typing. So we'll type in lobster. There they are, just arrow over to them, hit enter. Then using your plus and minus keys, you can add them. Now even though it's plus and minus, though, here's something that got me when I started. You have to hold down shift and plus to add. So we'll just add as many as we can, but for minus you only have to hit minus. So when you want to lower it, just hit minus when you add it. Just hold down shift and plus. That's all throughout the game. So as you can see over here, that uses up points. That the points go into skills and items. So just keep note of that. I think you get a few hundred in total. Not exactly sure. So over here is the animals we're going to bring. We're going to bring a dog, a male and female dog, a male and female cat, four hens and a rooster. F hens will give us eggs, and of course we need a rooster to uh, put the eggs in them. <laughs> and some ducks and drakes, because duck eggs, that's why. Alright, now, you don't really have to, but if you hold down Shift and F, you can name your fort, just hold on R for random names. We'll call it Kindle Rock. And hold down Shift G for your group name. Uh, hit, again, hit R for a random name. The alchemical class, fine. And then once you're ready, just hit E to embark. You have arrived after a journey from the mountainous mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness. Beyond your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all of Stinitar, that must be our civilization. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sus sustenance, whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you, but it is spring now. All the enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the jaguars get hungry. A new chapter of dwarven history begins here at this place. Stitza hid. Kindle rock. Strike the earth. So we hit enter and we get into the game. So right off the bat just hit space right away to pause the game. Now you might be intimidated right now. Don't worry everyone gets intimidated right away. But time's up and this is gonna do it for our first video. So that this was part one. Have a nice day everyone and I'll see you in part two.